Now, even though I told you my very favorite PBS friend is this guy right here, Curious George, there's actually a PBS friend that I like even more. And after chatting with George, right George? I guess he has a favorite PBS friend too, and it's the same. But we're not gonna tell you who it is yet. We're gonna keep you in suspense or anticipation. Sometimes anticipation or waiting to find the answer is just as much fun as finding out the answer. So George and I are gonna hold off a little bit. In the meantime, I'm gonna share with you my favorite Curious George book. I collect Curious George books because I love to read about him, but my very favorite is the very first one. It's where the idea for all the other Curious George things came from. All of the shows, the movies, the games, the stuffed animals, the toys, all the books started with this book right here. Just plain Curious George. Now this was written a long time ago by a couple from Germany. They never had any children, but they sure did love animals. H.A. Ray stands for Hans Augusto Ray, and his wife Margaret wrote these stories and did all the pictures or illustrations by themselves. We still enjoy reading them today. So I'm going to share it with you, and then when I'm finished, I'll tell you a little bit more about where Hans and Margaret came up with the idea for Curious George. Enjoy. Curious George by H.A. Ray. Curious George. This is George. He lived in Africa. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. One day George saw a man. He had on a large yellow straw hat. The man saw George too. What a nice little monkey, he thought. I would like to take him home with me. He put his hat on the ground and of course George was curious. He came down the tree to look at the large yellow hat. The hat had been on the man's head. George thought it would be nice to have it on his own head. He picked it up and put it on. The hat covered George's head. He couldn't see. The man picked him up quickly and popped him into a bag. George was caught. Yikes! The man with the big yellow hat put George into a little boat, and a sailor rowed them both across the water to a big ship. George was sad, but he was still a little curious. On the big ship, things began to happen. The man took off the bag and George sat on a little stool and the man said, George, I'm going to take you to a big zoo in a big city. You will like it there. Now run along and play, but don't get into trouble. George promised to be good, but it is easy for little monkeys to forget. On the deck, he found some seagulls. He wondered how they could fly. He was very curious. Finally, he had a try. It looked easy, but... Oh, what happened? First this, ah, then this, splash. Where is George? The sailors looked and looked, and at last they saw him struggling in the water and almost all tired out. Man overboard, the sailors cried as they threw him a light belt. George caught it and held on. At last, he was safe on board. After that, George was more careful to be a good monkey until at last the long trip was over. George said goodbye to the kind sailors and he and the man with the yellow hat walked off the ship onto the shore and on into the city to the man's house. After a good meal and a good pipe, George felt very tired. He crawled into bed and fell asleep at once. The next morning, the man telephoned the zoo. George watched him. He was fascinated. Then the man went away. George was curious. He wanted to telephone too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What fun. Ding-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling. George had telephoned the fire station. The firemen rushed to the telephone. Hello, hello, they said, but there was no answer. Then they looked for the signal on the big map that showed where the telephone call had come from. They didn't know it was George. They thought it was a real fire. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The firemen jumped on the fire engines and onto the hook and ladders. Ding dong, ding dong. Everyone out of the way. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The firemen rushed into the house. They opened the door. No fire, only a naughty little monkey. Oh, catch him, catch him, they cried. George tried to run away and he almost did, but he got caught in the telephone wire and 
thin fireman caught one arm and a fat fireman got the other and you fooled the fire department, they said. We will have to shut you up or you can't do any more harm. They took him away and shut him in a prison. Poor George. George wanted to get out. He climbed up to the window to try the bars. And just then the watchman came in. He got on the wooden bed to catch George. But he was too big and heavy. The bed tipped up and the watchman fell over. And as quick as lightning, George ran out through the open door. He hurried through the building and out onto the roof. And then he was lucky to be a monkey because out he walked onto the telephone wires. Quickly and quietly over the guard's head, George walked away. He was free. Down in the street outside the prison wall stood a balloon man. A little girl bought a balloon for her brother. George watched. He was curious again. He felt he must have a bright red balloon. He reached over and tried to help himself, but... Instead of one balloon, the whole bunch broke loose, and in an instant the wind whisked them all away, and with them went George, holding tight with both hands. Woo! Up, up he sailed, higher and higher. The houses looked like toy houses, and the people like dolls. George was frightened. He held on very tight. At first the wind blew in great gusts, then it quieted, and finally it stopped blowing altogether. George was very tired. Down, down he went bump, onto the top of a traffic light. Everyone was surprised. The traffic got all mixed up. George didn't know what to do. Then he heard someone call, George. He looked down and saw his man, his friend, the man with the big yellow hat. George was very happy. The man was happy too. George slid down the post and the man with the big yellow hat put him under his arm. Then he paid the blue man for all the balloons, and then George and the man climbed into the car, and at last, away they went. To the zoo. What a nice place for George to live. Well, George, you sure do like to get into a lot of adventures, don't you? But one great thing about George is that he always fixes his problems at the end and we always end up learning something new together, don't we, George? He's a cool guy. I don't know if you remember in the story, but at the very end, the man in the yellow hat took George somewhere where he was very happy. Do you remember that where that place was? I bet you guessed the zoo. And you're right, George loved the zoo. You know who is another really cool guy? Hans H. Ray, because he thought up Curious George. It just so happens that when he was a young boy in Germany, he grew up right next door to a zoo, and he used to visit it all the time and watch the animals. And it just so happens that that's where he came up with the idea for George. Now I have some friends that work down to the zoo, and they've invited us down to watch and learn a little bit more about real monkeys. I thought it'd be fun if George and I and you at home went and learned together. So let's go. George and I are here at the zoo. And the zoo is such a special place because it allows people to go in and observe or watch the animals and learn about them. And more importantly, care and respect the animals so that hopefully when they go home, they care about taking care of the environment. So those animals can be here for us to enjoy for a very long time. So we're ready to go in and watch some monkeys. So let's go. So here we are at the Siamat monkey cage with Zookeeper Dar. Hi. And I already learned something new, that these are not monkeys, are they? They are not monkeys. Siamangs are in the Gibbon family, which um, is considered an ape, uh, which is a primate, which is also what George is. Yeah. <laughs> so. relatives. They are relatives, yes. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could tell us a little bit more about them. Where yeah. are they from? They are from Malaysia, so very far from here. Okay. But So they're not a local ape. No, nope, <laughs> not by any means. And nope. what kind of food do they like to eat? Uh, they eat fruits and 
vegetables. Um, here at the zoo, we feed them apples, pears, bananas, honeydew, broccoli, green beans, all kinds of stuff mm, like that. You're making me hungry. That's mm -hmm. food I like too. Yeah. Nice. And how about when do they sleep? They sleep at night. Um, so what they do is they're out during the day playing, moving around. We bring them in for dinner. They get breakfast and dinner just like us, and then they go to bed. Just like we do when yeah. we get tired. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Very nice. They do nap during the day a lot too, though. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So maybe you could tell us why you like to work at the zoo. I like working at the zoo because A, taking care of animals just like this and also being able to show people of all ages what these animals can do and how you can help them and their wild cousins in the wild. Love it. Mm -hmm. Very good. You know, I can see them back there just having a ball, playing with toys just like you do at home, right? Mm -hmm. We have, um, it's called enrichment um, and so it's giving them stuff to interact with and play with, obviously. So they're demonstrating it well. Yeah. Uh, Kaya was the one playing behind us. She's our youngest and um, some of it is toys that you might recognize from home and other things that we've built for them to interact with. Um, we also have, other than Kaya, we have Demai, who's um, also a young one that we have, and then the parents are of Demai, are D and Dandy. How fun. Mm -hmm. You're so lucky to have this wonderful place to work. And awesome. I hope that you get to visit a zoo soon, right? Yes. Okay. Come get out and see us. Keeper dog, right? Yep. And all mm -hmm. these special animals or any zoo near you. It's a very special place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I hear our friends at Lions, Lions. saying yep. good morning, too. Yep, Lions are saying good morning to yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun. All right, so we're going to watch the monkeys a little bit, but we thank you for having us. Thanks for coming. Okay. I bet you can see why H.A. Ray spent so much time as a young boy coming to the zoo and how he came up for the idea of Curious George. Watching primates all day is so much fun. Watch. So now that we know where the idea for Curious George came from, I thought it would be fun to talk to some friends that helped bring Curious George to your home. The friends at the TV station at PBS. Now I'm one of those people that works for PBS, but George and I were just chatting and we're still not ready to share our favorite PBS friend with you just yet. You're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. But I have a bunch of friends at the station that would. So let's go check out the PBS TV station and find who they love to watch on PBS. Hi, my name is Jennifer, and I work here at WQLN PBS in the Education Outreach Department. I get to help with the WQLN Homeroom episodes, and I also help with other education programs. My favorite PBS kids friend is Curious George. I love him because he has so many fun adventures and he's always trying new things and he reminds me of my daughter when she was a little girl. I love bringing PBS Kids friends to you. Hi, my name's Tanae, and I work in the accounting department here at WQLN, and that means I get to reward my coworkers for bringing you programming, just like what my favorite character is. Daniel Tiger, and I'm talking about the original Daniel Tiger that used to be on uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and I used to watch that every day at noon when I was a child. And I loved Daniel because he was shy, and he loved people, and um, I was very shy when I was a child. And now I get to be on TV, and I get to talk to people like you, and that makes me very, very happy. And I love bringing PBS Kids Friends to you. Hi, I'm Tracy. I'm part of the team here at WQLN PBS. My favorite character, my favorite PBS kids friend is Grover. I love Grover because he has this huge imagination and Grover's so brave, he's willing to try just about anything and I think that is so special. I try to be a lot like Grover in my life too and I love bringing PBS kids friends to you. Hi, my name is Hallie. I'm a writer here here at WQLN PBS Kids. My favorite WQLN PBS Kids friend is Harry Monster and his friend Hercules. I like Harry and we're good friends because even though he's big and strong and tough, his personality is kind and sweet and caring. I think that's really important. And I love bringing PBS Kids friends to you.
Hi, I'm Shannon and I work here at WQLN and I make sure that we have enough money to pay for the programs that you love, like Daniel Tiger and Sesame Street and Xavier Riddle. All the programs that you love uh, cost money, so we need to raise money to pay for those programs. So that's what I do here. And my favorite character is the Count. I love his accent. I love how he talks. When I read to my children, I read in his voice like one, two, three. Ah, 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 ah. I love bringing PBS Kids friends to you. Hi, my name is Larry. I'm the programmer here at WQLN on the television, which means I'm the one to make sure that your cartoons come to you into your house. Uh, my favorite character is Clifford. I love Clifford because he's unique, but everyone loves him for the way he is. It's great. And I love bringing PBS Kids friends to you. Hi, I'm Bill, and I'm from WQLN's TV production department, and my favorite PBS character is Arthur here. Um, him and his friends were on PBS when I was a kid, and my sister and I, we used to watch them all the time, and I'm Arthur, and she's DW, uh, and I love bringing PBS Kids friends to you. Hi boys and girls, my name is Tom and I'm the president of WQLN Television and Radio. And my job here is to lead a team to make sure that we are broadcasting every day the programs that you love so much. You know, television has always been a part of my life. When I was a kid, growing up through the 1960s, I had favorite shows, programs like Paul Shannon's Adventure Time and Ricky Wirtz and Copper. And these were great programs for kids at the time but I'll never forget, I was a teenager when Sesame Street came on the air for the first time. So I was 13 years old, and I was a big teenager, but when I watched Sesame Street, it just showed me something that was so special and so different. I fell in love with it. And one person that I absolutely fell in love with was this guy, Grover. Let me see if I can put him right over his face. He was my favorite character right from the beginning. To this day, 50 years later, I still love Grover. And I also love bringing PBS Kids friends to you. Hey, I'm just hanging out here with my friend Miss Shelley. Hi there. How are you? I'm great. Good. And we were talking about our favorite PBS friends. Yay. The ones that get to come into your home every day and visit with you, right? Awesome. Yeah. So we wrote a song. You want to share it? All righty. Let's, right, let's go. Let's do it. One, two, three. PBS friends are so fun. Everyone is number one. the same <laughs> it is so who's your favorite PPS character? my favorite one is cookie monster good choice all right I guess it's because you love cookies I do look who I happen to awesome. have awesome everybody <laughs> loves cookie monster right? all right and my favorite is curious George absolutely I love to be curious and I love to learn especially with our friends at home so I have George here too all right so let's sing it again with let's them do okay it. All, all right, right. here we go One, two, three. PBS friends are so fun, everyone is number one, one that you can relate to, can make you say wahoo. PBS friends are so fun, everyone is number one, one that you can relate to, can make you say wahoo. Yay! Everybody probably has a different favorite friend, right? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm that's sure. what makes it so fun. Very cool. Yeah, but your favorite friend brought us a treat. What did he bring? What do you think it is at home? I'll bet a cookie. I bet you're right. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So let me. So excited. It was so fun to sing with you today. Thank you so yep. much for having me. Yay! Yay! Cheers! Cheers! Thank you. It's so fun to hear that even when you grow up, you hold your favorite PBS Kids friend inside of you forever. You know, everyone at that TV station, at WQLN, and all PBS stations everywhere, work so hard to bring those special PBS Kids friends home to you so you can enjoy those same special memories that they grew up with too. 
you grow and you change and you'll become a grown-up just like everybody else but some things just stay with you forever you are always just right just the way you are no matter what age you are that's why I want to share with a story with you called I am just right I am just right by David McPhail I am just right I am too big for my crib I am too big for my shirt I am too big for my shoes I am too big for my tricycle I am too big for grandpa to pick up but I am just right for him to hug I am just right for my bed I am just right for my new shirt and I am just right for my new shoes I am just right for my bike I am just right for my sister and I am just right for this book I am just right George and I were just chatting and we decided that it's finally time that we should tell you our favorite PBS kids friend are you ready George okay here we go our favorite PBS kids friend is you it's you at home yay and the reason is you because you tuning in and watching and learning with all of us here at PBS kids is what brings the magic to life it makes all the characters and all of us so special that we get to share this time with you and we hope that you feel special too and you'll carry those memories forever this is a super cool you are just right mirror every day you can look into the mirror and you can say you are the best that you can be you are just right and George can do it and so can you at home it's fun to make one of these just grab a mirror decorate it and put you on there and then tell yourself every day how special and just right you are if you want the directions go to wqln.org homeroom and look under PBS favorite characters well we love sharing this time with you but now George and I it's time for us to go so please remember that no matter where you go or what you do keep reading keep learning and keep always watching WQLN because there's nothing more that we love better than bringing learning to life with you. Bye-bye. PBS friends are so fun. Everyone is number one. One that you can relate to can make you say wahoo. PBS friends are so fun. Everyone is number one. One that